loud ones. Welcome to the second episode of Astrology Hun O Hun. Fucking here for it. We're going to be talking about sun signs today. So what the sun represents and then I'll briefly be talking about each of the signs and breaking them down into their elements and their modalities. It's going to be a bit of a longer episode today. Probably going to make mistakes. But listen, I'm not going to fucking edit them out because I don't know how to and I'm just not really that bothered. So yeah, sorry. Deal with that. In the last episode we talked about birth charts and how they're a log of where all the planets were when you were born. So your sun sign, which is the one that people tend to know, is where the sun was when you were born. So I'm going to explain today what the fuck that actually means. And exciting, we even have props today. So that's the fucking level. So here we have the 12 signs or constellations. Um, and these are the constellations that form the basis of Western astrology, which is the most popular form of astrology. There are lots of other constellations, including the bullshit 13 signs, but the 12 that are chosen are the ones that we use in Western astrology. There are other types of astrology as well that use more than 12, but that's not what we're talking about. So yeah, there's no 13 sign, get over it, cop on to your stall. So anyway, we have the 12 signs or constellations here with the sun in the middle. And we have the earth here, he's looking a bit fucking shook. He's scooting around the sun, taking 365 day, five days, he's a bit fucking slow. And um, the whole time the earth is scooting around, the sun is like, bitch, fucking see you. And he's watching its movement. There will always be a constellation in the background as the earth moves around. And it's in the sun's lines of vision. So right now the sun is looking this way into Scorpio and being like, listen, this is creepy as fuck. Let's get the fuck out of here. So anyone born during this time is a Scorpio. Born during Scorpio season. Funny how that works. The sun is in each sign for about four weeks and then it moves on to follow this cheeky little fucker the earth and it's going around a path like this known as the ecliptic. These 12 signs sit along the ecliptic but the constellations themselves move slightly all the time which is why the dates can vary from year to year. So yeah, I'm going to put this down because it's hurting my fucking arm. Anyway, in astrology, in astrology, your sun sign is the main part of your personality. It's your identity, your ego, your conscious decisions. It tends to be the part of your chart that you identify the most with, that feels the most like you. Um, it isn't, it's not always the case. Sometimes you can have a very strong influence somewhere else in your chart that kind of eclipses your sun sign but 99% of the time it's the part that you identify the most with. The sun is also associated with creativity and the father so it's how you see your father and if you're male how you'll be as a father. So coming back to the signs I'm not going to go into them too much detail because I do a detailed description of each sign in my posts when that signs season comes up. So I've done Virgo, Libra and Scorpio. If I haven't done yours yet, it's because your season hasn't come up since I created the page. So just be patient. We'll get there. Don't worry. I'll be doing a detailed post about Sagittarius very soon because their season is coming. Or should I say our season since I'm a fucking Sag. I can barely sleep with the excitement. Then after that, it'll be Capricorn season. So I'll be posting about Capricorns. I actually love posting about Capricorns, even though they fucking terrify me. Anyway, sorry, got sidetracked there. The 12 signs are divided into categories called the elements, which are fire, earth, air, and water. Then these th three signs, there are three signs in each element, and these three signs are split into the modalities. Some people call them qualities. So they're cardinal, fixed and mutable. The astrological year starts in Aries, which is a fire sign. And then the elements will always follow the same pattern. So it'll be fire, then earth, 
then air, then water, then back to fire and so on. So looking at the fire signs, we have Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. The fire signs are very fucking high energy. They're extroverted, always living in the moment and having the best fucking time. They're generally quite happy and positive, but if you piss them off, whoo, be careful. Aries is a cardinal sign, meaning they're great leaders, the ones who make the decisions and initiate it. The cardinal signs always bring in a new season, so Aries brings in springtime. Then the next fire sign after that is Leo. Leo are in the middle, so that makes them a fixed sign meaning they're very fucking stubborn. They like things their way and do not like to change them. Then the final best <coughs> fire sign is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the third fire sign, making them a mutable sign, meaning they're just a bit more flexible. They kind of go with the flow, but they don't really like to be the ones making the decisions. They just want to go along with whatever. Next we have the earth signs, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. They always have to come in and sort out the fucking chaos left after the fire signs. They're very practical, grounded, down to earth. They're smart and sensible and they love a fucking nature vibe. They're very stabilising presence. They're a little bit introverted and they can be seen as boring, I'm not saying they are. Capricorns then are the first one they bring in the winter season, so they're the cardinal sign. They're the ones in charge making the decisions because you'll probably do it fucking wrong, okay? Cop on to yourself. Taurus is the fixed one then, fixed earth sign. It's stubborn as fuck, that's why their symbol is the bull. Stubborn. Virgo then is the mutable earth sign. They adapt and go with the flow, but not in the same chill way as the other mutable signs because they are very fucking anxious about it all. They just always put others before themselves and adapt to whatever chaos comes up. Next we have the air signs, Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. They're the talkers of the zodiac, they never shut the fuck up. They're very charming and charismatic, major social butterflies but they also have an incredible level of intelligence intelligence behind all of their chat. They can be a little bit up in the clouds though some, sometimes because their brain works at 100 miles an hour so it can make, them ha make it hard for them to stay present. The cardinal, or the cardinal air sign that brings in autumn is Libra. They're the ones who take charge to make sure everything's fair and everyone's getting their turn. We need some order here. Just to say, by the way, it can be a little bit confusing with the cardinal signs because even though they're the leaders, they aren't necessarily the first sign of their element that comes up in the astrological year. So, for example, with the air signs, Gemini actually comes before Libra in the astrological year. But just remember that the cardinal signs always bring in the new season. So Libra brings in autumn. Um, so it's a cardinal sign even though Gemini comes first, if that makes sense. Anyway, the next air sign we have then after Libra is Aquarius, the fixed air sign. So they're quite set in their opinions. They will not be fucking changing them and they can get a little bit up on their high horse. Pause. After that then we have Gemini, the last one. They're a mutable sign. Um, with Gemini, there's so much going on in their heads and they want to hear both sides all the time, which makes them a little bit indecisive. They're also a major social chameleon, so they can just adapt to whatever situation comes up. They don't care. Finally, then we have the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. I have to be very careful what I say here because these are the emotional ones very fucking sensitive. They may burst into tears if I say the wrong thing. Or with the Scorpios, they'll probably just cry internally and then slash my tire. <laughs> Don't come for me. <laughs> um, the water signs are very intuitive and empathetic in 
the battle between head and heart, their heart will always win. Cancers bring in the summer season, so they're the cardinal water sign. Although, to be honest, the only thing they'd be leading is a fucking therapy session. That's the tea. Scorpio then is the fixed one. So, like, Taurus has always got a bad name for being very stubborn, but the Scorpios, whoo, people overlook them sometimes. Like, if you betray a Scorpio, forget it. You no longer exist. Gone. Deceased. They won't be budging. Then the final sign is Pisces, the mutable sign. They're the ones that are just completely off in their own little world. They don't even know a decision is taking place, let alone decide it. So yeah, they'll just go with the flow, go with whatever. So yeah, that's basically it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. Keep an eye on the page for more detailed posts about your sun sign and remember that your sun sign is just one part of it all. We'll be going into moon signs and rising signs as well as the other planets in later episodes. Exciting. So yeah, thanks for following. Tag your huns. Bye.